If you like the idea of using minute sketches, you still have to understand how to make your own minute sketches for any content that you want to learn. This example is adenosine triphosphate, ATP, the energy source for biological reactions. You'll start with a textbook or a useful website. Whatever you need to know will be in that textbook or you might find it on a website. In this example, I've taken the structure of ATP from Wikipedia. If you need to learn and understand the structure of ATP, the problem here is that the molecule is too complex. There are well over 30 different parts of the molecule. You have to decide which parts are the most important. In looking on Wikipedia, you might want to start by breaking it down to adenosine and triphosphate. Adenosine is this part, and the phosphate is this part. This is the tri phosphate, and a single phosphate is just this piece. Even this single phosphate is fairly complex to learn with four oxygens, two hydrogens, a phosphorus, and you have to remember which are double bonds, which are single bonds. Even that we may simplify. And we'll come back to the adenosine part, which is this piece. That has two parts, adenine here, and a sugar, ribose, here. In order to learn adenosine triphosphate, we want to learn each one individually first and then combine them. It's important to check your sketches for errors. There will be one error in this example that we'll correct. For the phosphate, the first piece to remember is a phosphorus with four oxygens. Notice I've left out a hydrogen here, a hydrogen here, and a double bond. Start with something simple that you know you'll remember. Test yourself here. Can you close your eyes and still picture all of this? This is what I call a fish version. In other words, an incomplete version, an early version of whatever it is you need to understand. This corresponds to PO4, phosphate. With practice, you might have a new version in which you show a double bond. This might be the version you practice first, and then later, with more practice, you add the double bond. With even more practice, you might even want to remember that there's a hydrogen, or there's no hydrogen there, and one or both of these oxygens are negative. The place to start is here. What about adenine and ribose? This structure with a carbon, a carbon, a carbon, and a carbon, and an oxygen, and two OHs, again, is too complicated to remember to start with. You need to simplify. When you're doing minute sketches, you can ask yourself a question. Do I need to remember the specific structure of this, or do I just need to remember that it's a sugar? If so, what makes it a sugar? I may need to start with the simpler structure, what makes it a sugar? If you go back to Wikipedia and a sugar, what you'll learn is that a monosaccharide is a carbon ring with an oxygen in it, and it can have different numbers of carbons. Ribose happens to have four. It's a pentose sugar with five parts of the ring, one being this oxygen here. You're going to remember it just as sugar and ribose. This is your simplest form for remembering the ribose, the sugar part. The next piece is adenine. The adenine is two rings, and they're nitrogenous bases. If you look up nitrogenous bases for adenine, they're carbon rings with two nitrogens in each. This might be enough at the early stage to remember this is a nitrogenous base, and adenine is two carbon rings with two nitrogens. You might also want to add in carbons. Start simple. Start with the fundamentals, two carbon rings with two nitrogens. When you remember that, you might want to add in things like an amino group. If we go back, our adenine is two carbon rings. Notice I paid no attention to whether there are one, two, three, four, five parts of the rings, three carbons and two nitrogens, or one, two, three, four, five, six, four carbons and two nitrogens, and I left off the NH2. Once you've practiced this version, you might want to add in these two carbons, this carbon, here's a nitrogen, here's a nitrogen, here's a nitrogen, here's a nitrogen, and there's a carbon and a carbon. 
So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and later you add one more piece to, which is the amino group, NH2. For now, we're just going to start with the simplest piece until those pieces make sense to you. So how would you practice this? Start with ATP, you might want to write out. It might be enough just to remember ATP, in which case you wouldn't bother with adenosine triphosphate. First, you need to remember the parts, phosphate. We're just going with the simplest, a phosphorus with four oxygens. And maybe at this point you decide, I really want to remember the double bond. The next piece is the sugar, or ribose in this case, if you decide you want to remember it. That sugar is a ring with an oxygen in it, and it can bind at either end, one end to adenine and the other to phosphates. You might decide you want to add the four carbons. I'll leave them off. And then adenine, which is two rings, each with two nitrogens, and maybe you'll want to add in the carbons, or maybe leave them off for now. A key question is, can you close your eyes and picture each of these? So try it. Stop the video and close your eyes and think phosphate, can you picture it? Sugar, can you picture it? Adenine, can you picture it? If you can, it's the right level. If you can't picture it, you've made it too complex and you have to wait and practice the simpler version before you can go to the more complex version. To practice, cover or erase the words and while looking at the images, write the words again. Phosphate, ribose, a sugar, and adenine. Now, to practice again, you want to erase all of these and practice. And maybe here's a point where you decide you want to practice that double bond on one of the oxygens. And the sugar is a carbon ring with a single oxygen. And maybe here you decide you want to add these carbons or maybe not yet until it sticks a little more firmly in your head. And then the adenine is two rings, each with two nitrogens. And again, here you might decide to add the amino group on one of these carbons, or you might decide to leave it off. Again, you can erase the words and, and write them down again. You can erase the sketch and practice again. Once those are clear, now you can combine them. ATP is adenosine triphosphate. So the adenosine is two carbon rings with two nitrogens in each, and that's bound to a carbon ring with an oxygen, and that's bound to three phosphates. To remind ourselves that this is just one of the phosphates, and there's going to be two more. So now we have adenosine, uh, which includes adenine and a sugar, ribose, and one of the phosphates of the three, adenosine triphosphate. With practice, you add complexity as you're ready for it. And you might even have a hydrogen that can come on and off when it's missing its negative, has a negative charge here, and then this is the bond that attaches to ribose. For ribose, you have your sugar, the oxygen, carbon, 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 and with practice, you might add the OH, oxygen, and hydrogen on two of the carbons, and the carbons that are connecting to either adenosine or phosphate. Did you notice the error? I mentioned correctly that ribose is a pentose sugar, but the mistake is I counted an oxygen as one of the five carbons. In fact, the ring has four carbons with an oxygen and one additional carbon right here. If that's important, you should correct it. Whatever you need to know, check for errors to make sure your sketches aren't making you remember mistakes. Let's review what we went through in order to develop a minute sketch. One, find information. Two, is it too complex? And most of the time, it will be too complex. Three, break it into simpler pieces. How simple? Close your eyes. Can you picture it? If not, it's too complicated. If you can, it's simple enough. Four, learn the pieces separately.
Five, when the pieces are too simple. Once you learn it, add back. When I practice this way, complex structures feel easier. So for chemical structures or chemical reactions, break them into pieces that make sense. The reason that we have terms like sugar is because a whole lot of molecules fall into that general category and they all share the same features such as that carbon ring with an oxygen. Try this on your own for other chemical structures to develop your own minute sketches.